Hi, in this video I will prove this Qur'an, the Hafs version, is false and unreliable, and therefore the Islamic world is misguided and wrong for trusting it. In the process I will be answering the following questions. Question number one. What is the most dominant Qur'an version used in the world today? Question number two. What are the conditions used to authenticate any version of the Qur'an? Question number three. Who was Hafs? And question number four. Was Hafs an honest and trustworthy man? So let's begin. Question number one. What is the most dominant Qur'an version used in the world today? For the answer, we turn to the book An Introduction to the Sciences of the Qur'an by Muslim scholar Yasir Qadi, which says, today, the majority of the Muslim world reads the Hafs Qur'an only. More specifically, on page 199, it says this Qur'an version is used by about 95% of the Muslim world. So, the overwhelming majority of the approximately 1.7 billion Muslims are in unity using this one version of the Qur'an known as Hafs. That's a pretty amazing uniformity. Question number two. What are the conditions used to authenticate any version of the Qur'an? For the answer, I turn your attention again to Yasir Qadi's book. Page 187 mentions three specific conditions. It says, Every qira'a, or reading, that conforms to the rules of Arabic, even if by one manner, and matches with one of the mushafs of Uthman, even if such a match is not an obvious one, and has an authentic chain of narrators back to the Prophet, meaning Muhammad, is an authentic qira'a. Did you notice that third condition? A Qur'an version or reading must have an authentic or reliable chain of narrators. In fact, page 189 of this book further states, this is the most important condition. Question number three, who was Hafs? Well, we already know the Hafs Qur'an is a Qur'an version, but why is it famously named Hafs? To answer that, I will simply show you the chain of narrators for this Qur'an version. As you see, I've underlined it for you in red. It says, Riwayatu Hafs bin Suleiman bin al Mughira al Asadi al Kufi, li qira'ati Asim bin Abi al Nujud al Kufi al Tabi'i, an Abi Abdul Rahman Abdullah ibn Habib al Sulami, an Uthman bin Afan, wa Ali bin Abi Talib, wa Zayd bin Thabit, wa Ubay ibn Kaab, an al Nabi. Which basically translates as the riwayah or transmission of Hafs ibn Suleiman ibn al Mughira al Asadi al Kufi of the qira'ah or reading of Asim ibn Abi al Nujud al Kufi from Abdul Rahman Abdullah ibn Habib al Sulami from Uthman ibn Affan and Ali ibn Abi Talib and Zayd ibn Thabit and Ubay ibn Kaab from the Prophet meaning Muhammad. So basically, the individual known as Hafs became famous for transmitting a particular reading of the Qur'an, named after the leader of a particular school of reciters. In this case, the leader was Asim. In fact, Yasir Qadi informs us on page 196 of his book that Hafs was the most knowledgeable person of the qira'a or reading of Asim. And, as you just saw from the chain of narrators, this Qur'an version, or reading, allegedly originates from Muhammad himself. Question number four. Was Hafs an honest and trustworthy person? In other words, can the Muslim world trust Hafs as an honest, trustworthy, and reliable person to transmit the Qur'an? This is our most important question. I answer by using the following Islamic source. In the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, Volume 1, Hadith number 1268, or 1267 in an online Arabic edition, Muhammad is quoted saying, Whoever reads Qur'an and learns it by heart, he will be granted intercession for ten of his family for whom hell was due. Now let's look at the comments below this Hadith. We'll see there is a serious problem here. Its chain of narration is graded as da'if jiddan, or very weak. Why is that? Well, it's because of the presence of Hafs in the chain of narration for this hadith. In fact, here are more comments on this same hadith in Arabic that provide us with more information why the presence of Hafs in a chain of narration makes a narration unreliable. It gives his name as Hafs Abu Umar, huwa Hafs bin Suleiman al-Bazaz al-Qari. And it says, وَهُوَ مَتْرُوكُ الْحَدِيثِ Meaning, and he is rejected in hadith. كَذَا قَالَ الْحَافِظِ فِي التَّقْرِيبِ 
وقال البخاري في الدعفاء تسع تركوه And it says, great Muslim scholars such as Al-Hafid and Imam Al-Bukhari likewise claimed Hafs is rejected. Next, we read other charges against him. أخذ مني حفص بن سليمان كتابا فلم يرده And notice here, وكان يأخذ كتب الناس فينسخها Which means, Hafs used to take books from people and copy them and not return them. And more importantly, we read here, وَكَانَ كَذَّابًا Which means, and he was a liar. Actually, for those of you who don't know Arabic, you can still find some information about his dishonesty in English also. For example, in the book Studies in Early Hadith Literature by M. M. Adami, it says on page 128, he copied other scholars' books and put their material in his own. He borrowed a book from Shu'aba but did not return it. In other words, according to these Islamic sources, Hafs was unreliable, untrustworthy, a thief, and a plagiarist who took materials or narrations from others, but made it appear like they were his own. And worse than that, he was a liar. In ending this video, my conclusion is the Hafs Qur'an is batil or false. It cannot be trusted nor be considered the word of God. Therefore, the Muslim world is seriously misguided for blindly accepting the Qur'an transmitted by a known liar and dishonest thief. Thanks for watching and God bless you.